Hi, I'm Faith from the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center, and thanks for joining me for today's virtual story time. Now today, as I'm recording this, it is Tuesday, June 16th, 2020, and this Saturday, June 20th, a special event is occurring. Do you know what it might be? It's the solstice. Did you get that right? So in the Northern Hemisphere, we often call this the summer solstice in June. For us here, like in New Hampshire, um, June 20th this year, the solstice will be the longest day of the year. And this will be the first day of our summer. Of course, in the Southern Hemisphere, they have opposite seasons. So Saturday will be the beginning of their winter and it will be the shortest day of the year in the Southern Hemisphere. So in honor of the changing of the seasons, today we're reading a story called The Reason for the Seasons. It's written and illustrated by Ellie Peterson, who is a middle school science teacher. So I think that's pretty neat. So we will get started. The Reason for the Seasons, written and illustrated by Ellie Peterson. The seasons, I'll bet you know all about them. How many there are, what they're called, when they occur. You might even have a favorite. Do you have a favorite season? I love the fall in New Hampshire. Mm. But do you know what causes the seasons in the first place? Perhaps you think it's that the earth is closer to the sun in summer and farther from the sun in the winter. After all, you're usually warmer when you're closer to a source of heat. Now a note on this picture over here, friends. The sun is much larger than it's shown here and much farther away from the earth. So if the earth was really this size right here, the sun would have to be the size of a bus and it would be <clears throat> eight football fields away. Unfortunately, we can't show you the actual size of the sun because this book is not that big. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have allergies <clears throat> and it is giving me a scratchy throat. So, if we had summer because Earth was closer to the sun during those months, then our whole planet would have summer at the same time. But it doesn't. When it's cold and snowy in the Northern Hemisphere, it's downright balmy in the Southern Hemisphere. They have opposite seasons. So now if we look at this picture, the imaginary line around the middle of the planet, um, of the planet Earth is called the equator. The part to the north of the equator is the northern hemisphere, and the part to the south down here is the southern hemisphere. And we're located right about here in New Hampshire, in the northern hemisphere. In fact, the Earth is only slightly is, is slightly closer to the sun in January and slightly farther from the sun in July. That means that in the Northern Hemisphere, Earth is closest to the sun in the winter. Seems strange, but it's true. Maybe you think we have seasons because the Earth rotates. It would seem to make sense that the side that faces the sun has summer and the side that doesn't face the sun has winter. We often connect light with warmth and dark with cold. Now a note on this picture over here, friends. Um, in order to complete one rotation in 24 hours, the Earth spins 1,000 miles per hour. We don't feel the Earth moving as it rotates because the speed is constant. If Earth suddenly stopped moving, we would definitely feel it. So, yes, maybe you think we have seasons because the Earth rotates. But nope, that's not it either. Rotation is actually the cause of day and night. The Earth rotates once every 24 hours. The side of the Earth that faces the sun has day, and the side that faces away from the sun has night. 
If rotation were the cause of seasons, we'd have all four seasons in a single day. Hmm. <clears throat> so what is the reason for the seasons, you ask? Well, our planet is tilted. Imagine a pole that passes through the Earth from north to south. This is called the Earth's axis. Instead of being straight up and down, it's tipped 23.5 degrees. If Earth wasn't tilted, we would have no seasons at all. Now a note on this picture down here. Scientists think Earth became tilted when a meteor the size of Mars hit it way back when our planet was first formed. And it's not just us. Uranus is tilted sideways and Venus is tilted upside down, causing it to spin backward. <clears throat> Earth's tilt. Earth's tilt affects how directly the, the light from the sun hits it. For instance, a spotlight puts out a very strong hot light when it shines on you. As you change the angle of the spotlight, the light appears dimmer. The light also feels cooler. This is because the same amount of light has to spread over a larger area. Earth's tilt is also why shadows are different lengths throughout the seasons. They're shortest in summer because the sun is higher in the sky, just like that spotlight overhead. Short shadow. The shadow grows a little longer in the fall. Your shadow is longest in the winter because the sun is so low. Then your shadow shortens again in the spring. <clears throat> Wondering what Earth's tilt looks like from space? The Northern Hemisphere has summer when it is tilted toward the sun and the light is most direct. At the same time, the Southern Hemisphere has winter when the sun's light is least direct. When the Southern Hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, it has summer and the Northern Hemisphere experiences winter. So let's look at this picture. I'll come a little closer here. In this picture, you can see that in June, which is right now, it's June 16th, here is the Northern Hemisphere and it's tilted. The axis of the Earth is tilted toward the sun. Here in December, six months from now, the Northern Hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. The Southern Hemisphere is tilted toward the sun. So we are experiencing in December, we're experiencing winter and the Southern Hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, getting more direct light. They're experiencing their summer. And then in the middle, we have September and March equinoxes. Yes. When you look at Earth's orbit from the side, it looks like an oval. But from above, looking down on Earth's North Pole, the orbit appears more like a circle. However, many people mistakenly draw that, that view from above like an oval, showing the Earth really close at one end and really far away at the other. This incorrect drawing has led many people to believe that summer occurs when the sun is closest to the sun instead of when the rays of light are most direct. So what it really looks like if you were looking down from above at Earth's rotation, this is the correct picture. Here's the sun in the middle. Here's the little Earth rotating around. And you'll see it's pretty close to a circle. It's not perfect. The sun is a little closer to one side, but it's still pretty circular. It does not look like this here, this oval. We do not have parts of our uh, rotation where we're really close and then really far away. That's not realistic. <clears throat> now imagine a world where the sun never sets. The Arctic Circle is known as the land of the midnight sun for this very reason. 
When the northern hemisphere has summer, the area near the North Pole is tilted so much toward the sun that on certain days it never gets dark. People who live in the Arctic Circle may go two or more months without seeing the sunset. The opposite happens in the winter. On certain days, the Arctic Circle gets no light at all. It's in 24 hours of darkness. The North and South Poles experience seasons as well, but they still stay pretty cold because the sun's rays are too indirect to make them much warmer. In another region closer to the equator, the light from the sun is very direct and there is little change in the amount of light energy all year long. This area is called the tropics and these countries don't experience big changes in temperature from season to season like the rest of the world. Scientists drew two imaginary lines around the earth to show where the tropics are located. The line to the south of the equator is the Tropic of Capricorn. The line to the north of the equator is the Tropic of Cancer. Throughout our whole history, people have relied on the seasons to mark time and the passing of each year. However, the way they define them is based on where they live and can vary greatly. Many islands and coastal areas have extra seasons like pre-spring and high summer. Areas around the equator have a rainy season and a dry season. The Incas, an ancient civilization that lived south of the equator, identified and based their calendar on two seasons, planting and harvest. There are many ways to think of the seasons, but only one thing that causes them, the tilt of the earth. Believing that earth is closer to the sun in the summer is logical. It makes sense, but that doesn't make it right. A good scientist always questions what she thinks she knows. The end. And then on the very last page of this book is a hands-on activity on modeling the way the seasons work with the different light rays and how they hit the earth at different times of year. If you're interested in that, we have a very similar activity on starhop.com slash blog. I posted it in my distance learning module today about seasons, equinoxes, and the solstice. So please keep your eye on our blog for more stories and activities and lessons. This week we're celebrating the changing of the seasons and I hope you join us next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.